Well, joining us now to discuss more on um, what precisely, or the perspective of security agencies in that area, uh, is retired Captain Umar Aliyu. Captain, well, you're in Lagos and I'm in Abuja, but I believe that we can have this conversation if you can hear me. Uh, what precisely is your perspective on what is going on in Southern Kaduna? Uh, good morning, Maupe. Um, from my own perspective as an observer, a security consultant's opinion, what I am seeing in Kaduna is sadly a failure on all fronts of government, law enforcement, and even the communities involved. I have watched closely. I do have a chronicle of the so-called Fulani headsmen, unknown gunmen, foreigners' attacks on villages. And I am really concerned by the use of platitudes. What do I mean by platitudes? There are words that have been so frequently and abeyantly used that they've lost meaning and people have lost interest in them. We have seen a situation where the threat is becoming bolder. The threat is becoming even more vicious. And I don't know, somewhere in between the law enforcement and government are either unwilling or are overwhelmed by this threat. That's my own summation of what is going on. Now, you've heard some of the uh, theories. I mean, I've been, you know, some of the causes of the crisis, because a lot of people believe that if they're able to get to the root of the crisis, uh, that they will be able to find a solution. Initially, we had heard from the state government attributing this, uh, this fresh attacks, you know, to the 2011 post-election conflict. But then again, we hear from the presidential spokesperson who says that he believes that these are communal attacks. And from the perspective of a security person, what precisely do you think this is about? Especially now that you talk about, you know, coordinated uh, militias, as it would seem, or unknown gunmen. That's what we get to hear almost all the time. Call it what you like, Maupe. There could be remote, immediate causes. Do all the research and all the rhetorics you want to do. It boils down to one thing. People beings walk into villages and sack these villages. And by so doing, whether they are Hausas, Yorubas, Fulanis, in fact, even if they were from the moon, one thing is clear. They commit offenses. Offenses known to the laws of our land as offenses. And they should be actually gone after and brought to book. I don't think any of that has happened yet. Oh, yes, we know who they are. Oh, yes, we know where they are from. Oh, yes, we know what they do. So what? So what? What have you done about it? And that's where I come with the word platitudes. People, from my observation, from information I have gathered, from indicators, are tired of hearing the same old lines. People want to see results. And let me tell you something. I do not intend to enter into politics because I don't do politics. If this problem is not grappled properly, I dare say it will be to this dispensation what Borno was to the last. You watch my words. What should security agencies be doing right now? We understand that the, the federal government has asked that a battalion uh, be deployed to uh, Kaduna, I think, to southern Kaduna. We understand that there's going to be a military battalion in Kachia, uh, local government area. But still, it doesn't seem that this has put an end to the crisis that we've seen so far. Uh, what do you think their security agencies should be doing that they're not doing currently? It's simple. Right from when that part of Kaduna State made headlines some time back in the day, like two decades ago, I was a cadet then, the Zangun Katav crisis. We have always had recurrent crises come and go. Putting a battalion there is not really going to be the solution. 
a battalion can sit there and idle out if the political will to nip this problem in the boat is not there. And let me tell you what I mean. For crying out loud, I have Fulani ancestry or ancestral background. In fact, I am Fulani, basically. But I'll tell you something now. Telling me Fulani headsmen are responsible for the problem at hand begs the problem. Even oranges come from trees, Maupe. We have to come from somewhere. It doesn't matter if they are Fulanese or Eskimos. The moment you actually begin to label them after any particular ethnic group, you mischievously and unwittingly take the sting out of what they've done. Because each ethnic group will rise to defend, not its own now, but its name. And that's where the hiccups and the bottlenecks come in. It's not about who they are. It's not about where they are from. It's about what they have done. And if it is wrong, then it will be treated as such. If you begin to append ethnicity or religion or even politics to security situations, then you are actually stoking a keg of gunpowder. We must be able to put politics aside when it comes to matters of security. And our politicians haven't shown a propensity to rise to that level yet. And it's a very costly, very costly bad habit. People beings, children, women, men are paying for this in blood and soul. And if it continues like this, the threat becomes bolder. A sense of impunity pervades our national social psyche. And if it is not curbed, very soon you will see parties resorting to self-help on both sides of the divide. People who see a gap in the security situation will exploit it. Those who are being killed will rise up and arm themselves. I saw a viral, uh, a viral tape that was sent to me where someone was preaching a sermon and saying, look, if you see a Fulani man, kill him. That in itself is what I'm talking about. Because this problem has been dislabeled from what it is, bandits and outlaws, to an ethnic thing. People are now saying, anywhere you see a Fulani man, kill him. So what if a Fulani man who is an adherent of your faith walks into your church to worship? He is likely going to be lynched. Why? Because there has been a failure of leadership to actually read this problem of its ethnic religious and political toga and see it for the toga it wears a criminal toga okay it's not anything but a criminal act let's wake up from this bad habit of saying ijo youths or fulani headsmen or unknown gunmen or foreigners no they have come into our land and they have done something our laws recognize as wrong or crime let's work on that so law enforcement for status will idle out for as long as our politicians do not grow up and get matured about security. It's a very costly blunder we're having here. It's taken a while for the security agents. I mean, it took a while before they finally intervened. I mean, we saw a situation where uh, the governor had to go there. He held a security meeting. That meeting was not very peaceful because we understand that there were protests. And in the process, uh, the governor's uh, vehicles were destroyed uh, when he went into that particular community. Shortly after, though, we also saw a situation whereby the federal government ordered the security agencies be deployed to that area. Uh, but then we also saw that, you know, a lot of the commun community residents did not feel assured by that. They wanted the uh, security men to be in the bush which is where they felt that the crisis and where they felt that the attacks were taking place and that the security men were just in town. Uh, is it something that uh, we understand that the security agencies, some of them say that their instructions are to stay in the town and protect their lives in town, not to go into the farms? Uh, from, coming from a, from, a secure, from a perspective of a security consultant, how do you see that sort of directive? Well, basically, the directive of security agencies 
to move into the towns is like, as one of my mentors say, after the smoking gun. Okay? There wouldn't have been any need to protect lives and property if indeed at the initial the right things had been done. Understand something about security operations, whether the police or the army. It's actually the tactical and the bottom of the, if I could call it, he, he, he strategic ladder. Whatever security men go and do, or what they do not go and do, is assumed to be a manifestation, a mirroring of the policies of their strategic leaders. And at the tip of this pyramid is the political leader. So basically, people will definitely glean off the actions of law enforcement agencies to mirror the instructions they received from their troop commanders, which in itself is an execution of direction given by their own commanders, which goes on and on and on until you get to the policy level. And that's why I'm happy on politics, politics, politics. Our leaders must understand immediately that whatever at the end of the day the security agencies do is a mirror impression of what you stand or do not stand for. So whether the soldiers or the policemen go into the bush or stay in town is not the issue. The issue is simple. Are you ready to stop this problem? And what are you doing to stop it?